Hey Lupus Life Hackers, Janine here from Lupus Health Shop. Welcome back to my channel, the best place for lupus warriors and supportive family and friends who want to learn more about root causes and symptoms of lupus. Do you ever get itchy skin or do you ever get random hives and rashes everywhere? Do you have brain fog? Do you have GI symptoms that are just unexplainable? And your doctor just keeps saying, oh, it must be lupus, it must be this. And they just give you Benadryl or it doesn't solve the problem. It just keeps it from like getting worse. Well, that means that there's a deeper rooted issue that is going on. And while it may be lupus, there is an underlying cause. I had mood swings, I had rashes that I would get randomly all the time. It didn't matter what I ate, even if I thought I was dairy free, I still somehow would get rashes or even if I was gluten free, I'd still get rashes. And so I was really confused on what was going on and I was frustrated and I was sick of wondering what to do all the time and I was sick of being in fear. Fear of having a rash randomly when I'm out, having being uncomfortable when I'm around friends and family and I, I didn't want to live like that anymore and if you don't want to either, continue watching. This week's topic underlying triggers of lupus, specifically candidia and the lupus connection. Do you want to thrive with lupus, prevent pain, and decrease all of your symptoms so much that you don't even feel like you have it anymore? We are the number one spot for lupus life hacks on decreasing symptoms naturally. So make sure to subscribe and hit that bell so you don't miss out on any videos. All right, let's dive in. So if you have an autoimmune disease, or you think you do, we always have multiple root triggers. That's why when sometimes you'll hear people say they got rid of dairy and their symptoms improved, but they weren't gone. Or sometimes people take supplements and they'll, they'll remove dairy and gluten from their diet and their symptoms improve drastically, but they're still not 100% there. That means there are other underlying issues within the body that are triggering these symptoms as well. So it's really, really important to have proper testing in order to find exactly what your triggers are. We might share a few of the same triggers, but some of them are actually going to be different. And that's why I have different videos of all different types of triggers so it can help you figure out which one's best in reducing symptoms for you. The biggest issue that everyone has with autoimmune disease, one of those triggers is leaky gut. Leaky gut is something that I talk about often in my Instagram posts. So if you haven't already, make sure to follow me on Instagram and like us on Facebook because I go back and forth often on blogs and videos and some tips that you won't find here. Leaky gut ties into pretty much all the symptoms that we experience and when we have leaky gut, that means that our immune system isn't working properly and that invites other co-infections to, to come into our body and wreak havoc, which makes everything even worse, more frustrating, and harder to deal, deal with in the beginning. But once you know how to solve the problem and get to that root cause like I'm gonna tell you, then it's smooth sailing from there. Even if you don't have a dairy allergy or any food allergies, because of leaky gut, you will have food sensitivities. It might not show up on the general test that, you're, that your maybe allergist is testing for, but it will show up in other ways through symptoms, through GI issues specifically, rashes, brain fog, mood issues and irritability. You might show in other types of testing like your IgG and your IgA blood tests. So it's a combination of different things that will help you figure out what allergies or specifically what sensitivities you have. What also is a big game changer is eliminating those foods from your, from your diet. And I'll get into that as well. So even if you don't have these allergies, you're gonna be reacting to dairy, gluten, soy, food coloring, sugar, especially more like processed sugar, not as much natural sugars, but that can still be an issue. Besides the fact that those ingredients aren't even the same as natural substances that we would find like with plants and fruits, that's what happens when our body doesn't know how to handle it because it is a foreign substance. Even so, gluten's not the same gluten that our family and ancestors had 60 years ago and 100 years ago. It's a man-made protein that is created in labs. And that's why we're seeing such a high rate of sensitivities with gluten. 
over time, when you have this and you're feeling symptoms like, like you don't get a good night's sleep, your stomach hurts sometimes, you feel bloated, these are all minor symptoms that your body's signaling to you to change something before it gets worse. That mixed with environmental with other environmental triggers like maybe viruses, bacteria, taking antibiotics, birth control, or anything else that's gonna destabilize the homeostasis or the balance of your hormones, that's when lupus is triggered. So your gut is continually broken down. There's one layer thick of lining in your gut, right? It does have some openings and that's to allow some things to pass that are supposed to, but because of all of these foreign intruders and because your immune system's not properly equipped, even when you were healthy and showing minor symptoms, it's making those holes bigger. And over time, things are passing that shouldn't be. And that's when your, auto, your immune system just shuts down. Candidia is actually one of the most common overgrowths that occur in our body. And it happens to the majority of us, even those who feel like they're healthy, but, but have like sleep problems or maybe some anxiety. They do have some symptoms of leaky gut and it's an easier fix for them at this point. And that's when they should start being proactive. If you like see so far, subscribe and click on the bell so you don't miss out next week on our new video. Now back to the topic of the week. Candidia is good in small amounts. In fact, we have it in our gut and different parts of our body because it helps the environment or the ecosystem of bacteria. But when it's overloaded and it becomes too, and it grows too much, that's where you experience oral thrush, yeast infections, maybe different fungal infections in your arms, your armpits, it can happen anywhere. So it does show in a variety of symptoms and it might be hard to connect in the beginning. That's what this video is for. Candidia is a type of fungus, like I said, and it lives in your gut. When there is too much, it's just to break down the walls of your intestines and toxins circulate through your body. They cross that barrier and they start going through the blood. So some of the symptoms that you might experience and if this sounds like you, comment below what you do experience and maybe we should talk more on how to help you get your testing done. Pain, of course. Fatigue, I'm sure you have that. Digestive issues, constipation, bloating, diarrhea, cramping. If you've had any other GI issues ruled out like Crohn's, celiacs, IBS, which IBS is actually a symptom of candidia, I would definitely look into the candidia direction. Brain fog, memory problems. You can actually have candida overgrowth circulate through your body into your brain. Any nutritional deficiencies. If you're taking supplements, this is one, I will actually have a video on supplements and how to know if you're taking a good one or a bad one. If you're continuing taking a supplement and it doesn't help you, it could be because there are other factors that are pulling those nutrients out of your body. And that's why you can never get enough. If you have eczema, rosacea, rashes, itchy rashes, or just red bumps and high headaches, intense craving for sugar, intense craving for carbs. If you have any mood disorders, joint pain, fibromyalgia, thyroid condition, and autoimmune disease. So if you have all of the above, or even some of them, keep listening. So now that you better understand what candidia is about and how it can present itself inside your body, what is the connection between candidia and autoimmune disease? So since your gut or your immune system is supposed to protect you from all these foreign invaders. When there's an overgrowth and when you have leaky gut, things are passing that are not allowed to. And over time, it gets weaker and weaker and you start to have more sickness. You start to have more symptoms that may either be connected or not. That's where the environmental triggers come from, whether it's chemical sensitivities, food sensitivities, all over not feeling well. All of a sudden, one day you wake up and bam, you have an autoimmune disease. Another issue is when those particles are leaking into your bloodstream and they start to resemble the tissues of your cells. That's what we call molecular mimicry. The example that I found really helpful, one of many blogs that I found um, on the subject is Amy Myers, she's a doctor. I'll put the link below, but she had a great example. Thyroid disease or Hashimoto's. So anyone with that, when you eat gluten, like I said earlier, even if you're not allergic to it and you don't have celiacs, you have, this is a food sensitivity. Here's the example. The gluten protein is, resembles the thyroid protein very, very much. And because your immune system is not on its A game, 
it is unable to recognize the difference between your thyroid and the gluten that you're eating. When you eat gluten, your immune system is attacking the thyroid antibodies, and that's why you can never get better even if you're taking medication, because you have to remove those other triggers until your immune system is fully healed, and then you'll have more freedom. We can eat healthy all day. I'm even on a plant-based diet, and I still struggle sometimes, because I'm not paying attention to those ingredients. If you don't get rid of the candidia properly and you don't rebalance your gut and you don't replenish it with nourishing food, then you're not fully healing. And that's exactly why I started my candidia protocol. By eradicating it from your body, you will be able to push all the bacteria out of your body, the overgrowth. You'll be able to heal your gut and there won't be as many holes anymore. Once they close, your immune system will start to work the way it's supposed to. You can go into remission. If you want to learn more about the Candidia protocol that I'm doing, if you want to know the step-by-step, -step, next week's video, I'm going to walk you through the supplements that I take and why. It's, I'm going to walk you through how long to take them for because it's not forever. I'm going to walk you through the diet that I use and how hard it was and how I feel now. Trust me, it's something that you don't want to miss. And it's something that you can definitely do at home and on a budget. In the meantime, while you wait for that awesome video, make sure to click on these two videos right here. Make sure to click on these two videos over here and you can learn more on decreasing symptoms naturally and learn more about how lupus affects you and what to do about it. Subs if you loved it, thumbs if you liked it, and as always, I appreciate your support and I will see you next week.